Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be covering a GCG mid shadow deck. So it's one of the top four mid shadows that placed in the season three volume three mid uh, op JCG open. So one of the top tier tournament decks for the Japanese players. But overall, it's a pretty standard mid shadow deck. Nothing too crazy, and I thought, why not give it a whirl? So we'll get right into some games here and go over some mulligans. Our first matchup is against Dragon, one of the more popular meta decks at the moment, I guess. So we've got Little Soul, Serb, and Zombie Party. Cerberus is a little weak, and Soul Squasher is pretty average. But worth keeping if you don't believe you could draw another two drop in the super early. But the zombie party does provide some good clear in the early game. Whew, this dragon player does absolutely nothing for their opener, which is always good. I, they must have had a pretty lousy hand overall because they don't really do much other than play Oracle turn two, which is good, but they really lack any kind of play, especially against an aggressive deck. You would hope that you'd have something to clear that Soul Squasher instead. But maybe try to set up for something else. Dragonite does come down, using it, obviously. Ramp and a body. We can pretty much ignore that. Hit the face. Throw out the Skull Beast, maybe even use the Soul Conversion. Draw a couple of cards. Because why not? Fortunately, just play another Skull Beast, so basically free shadows. They do go for that ramp and heal though, putting them at 7 super early, so they've triple ramped in the first 4 turns, making things pretty damn quick, and a little harder for me to handle. Luckily this Prince of Catacomb play spills out the board nicely so that it's not easily clearable. Plus we've still got enough left for Death's Breath combo, if we can, you know, pull that off. So nothing too crazy, they play a civil. We decide, hey, what are we going to do here? So I decide to go Cerberus because I know that I can trade into that pretty well. Trade value isn't great, but it could be there. But instead, I think a little bit more. I decide, hey, hitting face sounds like the best place, especially when we have a demon lord follow up. They will heal 3, making that last zombie's damage kind of pointless, but we get the 4, uh, sorry, 5 from the other follower. Fortunately, Grimnir, something I should have expected. If not, it was going to be Bahamut, but either way, we were going to be summoning some stuff. Unfortunately, I wish it was some more. 3 of them kind of isn't that great, especially when they can trade into 2, leaving just a single zombie up on its own. Although the Demon Lord does get full value no matter what here, so it's pretty good play. Giving us enough value to clear out both Sybil and V4-4. Deciding that I should probably evolve the Hector though, looking at that. Being able to ram the Sybil with it is just a much better play. It allows us to keep our board reasonably steady and force more removal. Does make us weak to a Salamander though, and another Grim, but a risk I was willing to take considering our follow up plays. So, of course, second Grim. The odds of them having all three are uh, mild. So, flooding the board again and getting that couple of damage in while we can wasn't too bad. I mean, we have more Demon Lords in the deck, we have more options for draw power. We have the Catacomb Bone Chimeras and the Death's Breath. All we have to do is hold out long enough to play them. Which isn't too hard. I mean, there's the other Demon Lord right there. A perfect, perfect option for our next few plays. So, hopefully setting up a lethal option. Bahamut coming down. Gives us two on ones. With the Evolve though, they will block most of this damage. Meaning I've just got to kind of swarm the board as best I can. Just being mindful that the Bahamut is a threat. But fortunately, Soul Squasher, easy removal. And the 1 2 drawing us cards. 
setting up another full board that has to be wiped. It's pretty much remove my board or lose at this point. And that Salamander, luckily, isn't quite enough on its own. And the Rahab, allowing us to go lethal with Demon Lord. Double Demon Lord summons will kill the Rahab, and then the two ones will easily hit them in the face because they will be four ones. Very easy way to go for lethal. Whoever said Hector was broken. Our second match is against Blood, so of course, early mulligans, you are looking for, you know, one and two drop range cards. Three drop is okay if you've already got the one and two drop, which is pretty normal for Shadow. As long as you're curving out and being able to draw cards, you can usually outplay your opponent with this deck. Of course, a little bit of luck goes a long way in any card game, so getting lucky and having ideal curves also work out pretty well. Because you can always assume the worst from your opponent. So trying to play around their worst, sometimes having to take the risk and saying, hey, if I die, I die. But for the most part, you can usually bait them into other players. So Demon Lord already in our hand. Options for Zombie Party to kill off Ravania. Why not? I mean, we don't want those bats being summoned. Especially when a Vimperic Fortress is being played. Now a little more difficult, we don't really have any other play other than Demon Eater. I mean, Soul Conversion was an option, we could have Soul Conversion into a 2-drop if we wanted, but getting that Demon Eater out now isn't a bad choice either. The board looking pretty good. Zate Noble does get played though. Luckily Zombie Party coming to our rescue, getting rid of it for no value on their part. And us being able to play Skull Beast. Which, if we so choose, Soul Conversion works pretty nicely with it, but it's just up in the air and whether that's the way I would want to go with it at that point. Fortunately though, I decide not to, just because, you know, Soul and Skull Beast, why would I have to waste it when I can just leave it up? So they do a face, and then the bats trigger, giving us more damage. Unfortunately, I have to come up with a play. I have to hit them somehow. I just like Catacomb is a good option because I do get the the summons off on it. And I decided the Catacomb Evolve was okay. I mean, why not? Catacomb Evolve. Solid 3 2. Leave up just the 3 4. They do go for Karabos. Luckily we have Soul Squasher, meaning that's not a really big threat with their Evolve on it, which is pretty expected. They do trade pretty well though, while leaving us with an okay board. The only problem now is we are on 7, they only need 6 to win, a Razory Claw combo will finish us off, so we've just got to hope that they don't have it, because there's no real way to block a Razory Claw combo. But we do clear the board and hopefully set up for a Demon Lord Hector coming down in the following turn. Because Demon Lord is the crux of this deck, if you haven't already noticed, which I'm sure if you know Mid Shadow, you know that's the case. They do go for the big knuckle though. And the small little Vania. Vania is pretty adorable, so why not lolly fights? Demon Lord coming down for an insta win. A nice amount of damage, easily giving 14 with what's on board there. And now the final matchup, Shadow vs Shadow. Don't know why we were paired up against like a lower ranked player though, considering that we're in Master and they're not and we were playing ranked. Let's just say my rank points aren't looking great right now <laughs> from doing other videos, but... I mean, getting ranked up, Shadow vs Shadow matchup. We do end up with the Skull Fighters. Being a pretty good turn one, I mean, why not? It's an extra shadow, it's a 1-1 one -one body, it forces them. They have nothing, which means it actually gets some value here. I decided to go Lurching Corpse, because I know I can combo up with the Demon Eater or Force Removal. I'm going to get one or the other off that. So, it's a good play. 
Fine Chimera turn three options. And of course the now double Demon Eaters, which are a great draw power. They do have their own Lurching Corpse though, so something to be mindful of going forward. We don't want to really have to deal with that until we have a good way to do it. Skull Beast into draw. Always a great play. Fortunately, I don't play anything else. I didn't want to overextend. I felt like going up against Shadow, they're bound to have something that's going to punish me here. So why go, you know, into this Skull Beast, Skull Fighter, and why I shrink my board? They were my only two options, so I decided not to go with either of them. Fortunately, you know, we avoid, avoid a lot of damage, I guess, or some damage. Getting that one damage and then demon eating again. This time I have to decide how I want to do this. So I take the draw here, along with the Skull Fighter. Being able to use the Skull Cradle as a draw power works out pretty nicely. I mean, we leave them with two one twos that can't even hit our board, while we have a fairly good damage setup. Cerberus, though, putting a little wrench in the works. Fortunately, we have our own Cerberus, Prince, and little Soul Squasher, so more than one option to definitely go for a good game here. Use Zombie Party so you can save the Soul Squasher. Sometimes you just want to keep them shadows, and this is one of those times, just in case Demon Lord is playable next turn. I want to make sure that if some of this board does get cleared, I have the option to refill and deal damage. And of course, Demon Eater on the Lurching, going for that proc value. You do play lots of small stuff in this deck, but all that damage does add up pretty quickly. Fortunately, they do get the double and hit pretty good targets, honestly. They do miss the 3 4, which kind of sucks for them because now they are forced to trade out this Evolve. Which is pretty good for us. It means if I want Soul Squatcher gets value, if I want Cerberus gets value, either way. We're pretty well off. Using Soul Squasher, why not? I mean, they haven't got any more evolves, so we're not expecting any more evolved targets. Cerberus allows us to set up our hand pretty nicely and leaves us in a good spot. They don't really have much that can threaten our board currently either, so why not do any of this? I mean, we've got Skull Cradle in our hand, so that's draw, along with Soul Conversion, that's three draws. I do take this Lurching Corpse Soul Conversion combo, probably a bad option. I was kind of aiming for the 4-5, I should have just done the trade to start with anyway, and then left the 1-2 and hoped that it hit that, and then traded that way, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking with that turn, it was just very awkward and clunky, and I didn't really like it much. Fortunately though, we do have our Skeleton and our Cerberus, and we have a full hand of Cocoa and Mimis to do a lot of damage. And they have pretty much nothing, I mean, we get another Skeleton here. We can use that bolstered up with those four spells to be way more than enough damage. Going in for that little bit of BM damage before we add the final bit. And finishing off that match. So if you guys did enjoy this video, I'll have the deck list in the description below along with the source. Um, the JCG decks will keep coming as, you know, the JCG happens, along with other other competitions, other tournaments, top player index. I like to cover what I can, especially if they are a little bit different, or sometimes even if they're not. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya!